One and a half miles of classic racing ahead. Ready to go for the Irish Derby. Leicester Pickett riding Ribeiro to victory. Unbelievably, the Derby double. Sure, Darwin, Leicester Pickett striding up to win this. This one, the Irish beats Derby in a canter. Carried home by the roars of the massive crowd. Sunder wins it by a big margin. It's Galileo. He's in the toiling. It's no contest. As he got the line, Dylan Thomas wins it. It's Australia waltzing to victory in the Irish Derby. How sad is this in the name of Pat Collins? He's got a win. Once again, the calendar says it's Derby Day. The world's most famous flat race here at Epsom. For a jockey, this is the most important race in your life. The ultimate test for a thoroughbred. Aidan knows he has a tried and tested way of preparing these horses for the Derby. Nine to two, arrest August Rodin and military order. Co-favourites for the Derby. Longish holds at the scent on their way. It's San Antonio and Adelaide River who corner first. August Rodin tries to break cover as they make their way up the home straight in the derby. Adelaide River with King of Steel coming out of the pack and King of Steel takes over. August Rodin trying to hunt down the leader. King of Steel still narrowly. August Rodin is relentless down the outside and it's another derby for Aiden O'Brien, his ninth, and Ryan Moore's third. August Rodin finally fulfills all of the talk. This horse has great pedigrees. He's always shown he's a good horse. We always felt he was the most special horse that we've had in Valley Dive. Ryan gave him an incredible ride. You know, he was so cool, he knew the pressure was on, and he gave him such a peach of a ride. Aidan O'Brien has bossed this place. Simply a genius. And will August Rodin become the 19th horse to do the Epsom Curra Derby double? Anticipation is building at the Curra. We've got the Air Corp with the Irish Defence Forces doing a flyby and the Newbridge Gospel Choir in the parade ring ahead of the horses coming in. There's a tense moment, there's a big team for Aidan O'Brien looking for his 15th win in the race. It would be a first for that man there, Ryan Moore. He rides the hot favourite, August Rodan. And Richard has the details. So here are the runners and riders for this year's Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby Group 1 contest. 1,250,000 euros, headed by number one, Adelaide River for Shami Heffernan. Two, the short priced favourite, August Rodin for Ryan Moore. Three, Covent Garden, Declan McDonough, and four, Peking Opera for Tom Marquand. The top four, all trained by Aidan O'Brien. Another O'Brien, but Donica trains number five, Proud and Regal, the Mount of Gavin Ryan. And six, San Antonio, who was the subject of some support, didn't handle a track at Epsom. Wayne Lorden is in the saddle. Seven, Spreewell for Shane Foley, eight is up and under for Mikey Shee, and number nine is White Birch, Dylan Brown McMonagall, who finished third behind August Rodin at Epsom. August Rodin has been a very short priced favorite throughout and is currently showing at four to 11. White Birch and Spreewell, who were third and fourth in the Derby, 11 to two and six to one, 20 to one San Antonio, yet another to run at Epsom. So you can see there is a sort of paucity of form lines really coming from anywhere other than the, the Derby a run at Epsom, 20 to 1, San Antonio, 25s up and under, 33s, Proud and Regal. Exchanges, 1.44, August Rodan, so you may find that 4 to 11 is headed to go sort of towards 2 to 5, but uh, no real opposition of any substance to the market leader. Let's cross trackside and join Sally Ann before the Irish Derby. Well, the first horse that we're going to start with here, Kevin, is, of course, the Derby winner, August Rodan. Such a good-looking son of deep impact and, of course, out of rhododendron. Fabulous pedigree, Sally Ann. Looks quite a bit like his grandsire, Sunday Silence, in terms of markings. Um, and look, he's a fantastic specimen. The form is there for all to see. He's clearly the one to beat here. Um, he looks in fantastic order. Um, looks well up for Davey near side, Pat Keating near far side. And look, I think everyone's really looking forward to seeing what he can do today. In the background, you might have seen White Birch just heading out. He only did one lap of the parade ring. But one horse who's powering around here is number seven, Spreewell, for the Jesse Harrington team. Yeah, this is a lovely horse physically, Sally Ann, a fantastic walker. And look, he ran a stormer at Epsom as well. And the race didn't go his way. He came from a similar position as August Rodan, but he just got pocketed at a key juncture. And that cost him. It might have cost him third. I think he could have been third on another day. Um, his connections will feel that this track should 
should suit him much better and they'll be hoping that he steps up and can maybe make it Gus Rodan uh, or certainly get quite a bit closer to him today. And just at the back of that bunch, we'll see him as he goes through the crowd, is up and under for the Joseph O'Brien team. He's been placed behind quite a few of these horses in the, in the trials for this race. That's right, Zalian. He comes here a maiden, um, but with a high level of form. He was arguably a li little, bit un little bit unlucky not to beat White Birch when they met in the trial at the beginning of the season, um, put in his place by Spreewell last time. But look, I think there's scope for him to improve over this longer trip. The faster ground is the question mark, but I think he has an each way chance, perhaps. They look fantastic in the paddock. We'll try and catch up with a few more uh, ahead of the start. But let's analyse the derby at Epsom because look at White Birch where he started from the low draw. He's the grey horse. August Rodan ended up settling in a pretty good spot. Up on the front end we had Adelaide River and San Antonio. Uh, what can we pick out from here that will help us analyse the race at the Curra? There's a lot, a lot of it's there's such a different track, isn't it, Jace? That it, a, a lot of it becomes not irrelevant, of course, but like White Birch, he was pretty slowly away there. The issue is you have overstaying trips. If we focus on him just for, you know, for the sake of this, if you go and send a horse from a slow start and then they grab hold of the bridle and you've got a, a you know, a middle long distance race to cope with, so you kind of try and sit quietly and and coast into things. I mean, Westover was third in last year's Derby, then went on to win the Irish Derby. So uh, White Birch will be trying to do the same as Westover. I suppose what you could say is that August Rodan. He was an impressive winner and there was some margin back to White Birch and Spreewell. Although he did have things go pretty much his own way in the run. He got a good settle. He didn't get any interference. Spreewell got his run checked. White Birch came from a long way back. Yeah, he did. Um, but I think that he's got all the gears. He's got all the attributes, hasn't he? And um, Francesca, if you go back through, um, we've had quite a few on odds on shots down the, the years, haven't we? Harzand. And then it wasn't that long ago. Australia went off at one to eight. Camelot went off at one to five. Fame and glory for Johnny Murta, eight to eleven. You know, we've we've had quite a few shorties in the past. Yeah, and we've had Endo Brown win it with not his first string. Although, despite the disappointment in the two thousand guineas for August Rodin, he's looked pretty excite exciting throughout. And Aidan was very bullish about him, wasn't he, before uh, the Derby at Epsom. Now back to Salian, who's with another trainer with the runner here. Well, Jesse, we've seen Spreewell going around the parade ring here and he's powering round. He looks so impressive and really taking proceedings in his in hand. Yeah, he's, he's that sort of horse. He's a great walker, but he's very relaxed. Um, and, and that, you know, he does nothing. the big crowds and the buzz here don't seem to worry him at all. The, those aeroplanes went over there and he didn't even flinch. And it, he didn't really have the best of running in, in Epsom. He was following the wrong horse through that stopped in front of him. Do you think that the track here at the Curra will suit him better? I hope it will, yeah. And there's, you know, there's less runners, and it's a big galloping track, and we've got a good long straight here. So I'm hoping that it will suit him a lot better. And you, Shane Foley, back from injury to, to ride this weekend. That must have been an important factor. That was, you know, it really was. It was great that you know he could be here to, to ride him, and he's made made a tremendous effort to get himself fit for this. Best of luck today, Jesse. Thank you very much indeed. And she had a runner in the Deutsche Derby at Hamburg earlier on today. It wasn't to be, though, but good luck to Jesse here with Spreewell. We can see him action in the Derby trial at Leperstown two starts ago, where he won with the up and under in behind him and proud of Regal also. Yeah, no no fluke about this. Um, you know, stayed on really, really well down the outside. He went off an eight to one shot here. Um, we'll say proud and Regal went off at six to four. So a little disappointed him. They dropped him back in trip after this, didn't they? And ran a fair sort of race in the in the 2000 afterwards. Um, you know, we're, we're clutching, aren't we? We're trying to find something to take um, on what is a very strong and uh, a worthy favourite. You know, he's got he's got a lot of beautiful, beautiful credentials. You think how good he was as a juvenile and what he did at the back end. And we were talked about as having the, the horse who was going to go and do the triple crown. It didn't happen after the guineas. Straight back on track in the derby. The hood on White Birch down at the start, the red hood. We haven't seen that before. It looks like he's got a, a pony or a, or a, a company accompanying horse with him yeah i mean again it's frustrating isn't it for him because he doesn't not look relaxed he does perhaps he's too relaxed that's the issue that he's just kind of standing in the stalls relaxed and not then jumping out sharply but look the, the main thing in here was majority of these we've seen over 10 furlongs obviously white birch we saw winning over 10 furlongs we hadn't seen that yet had we from august rodan and up to that mile and a half last time just it didn't seem to bother him at all and uh, back to sally ann who's with a familiar face 
joined by Ken Peterson and of course still Kevin Blake to talk about the, a little bit about the Irish Derby runners ahead of the race. And Ken, what was your pick in the paddock ahead of this race? I've got to say, two horses stand out. I thought August Rodin has taken a really good step forward since the Derby. His coat looks immaculate. I thought he looked well, but spree well. Derby day got a bit warm today. He looked great in his coat and he walked around a lot of purpose. I thought those two stood out. White Birch was a little bit excitable in the pre braid ring and he went down to, to post early. Okay, so White Birch a little bit excitable. He's got his mate down there at the start. Looks like he went down early ahead of the rest of them. They want to be getting away better with him, having been slowly away in his previous starts. But, but the track at the current, Jason, very different to Epsom. You haven't got the climbing early and the turning and the camber, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is it is it easier essentially for these yeah, horses? Yeah, it, it is a lot easier um, for them for them to handle. Obviously, one left hand, one right handed. But this is a, a beautiful galloping track. Very, very fair. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky as they come into the straight. If you get caught down on the on the inside and down the back. Uh, and across it, uh, as Kevin was suggesting earlier on, the wind really gusting and then it'll be at their tail. So it'll be all important to get a bit of cover. Be good when you've got a, a big team around you like the Red Hot favourite has. But Proud and Regal could go well at a bit of a price. Yeah, nowhere near as um, warm as it would have been at Epsom, Kevin, but Spreewell, I know he was noticeably kind of sweaty and warm and het up before the start of the, the derby. He looks a lot calmer today, does he, down at the start? No, it looks fantastic, Leona. Like, you know, I've just been really impressed with him through this whole process now here. He's looked in great order, like particularly good order. So um, his connections will be absolutely delighted. And um, look, the run of the race is a really interesting one. Look, um, Aidan O'Brien numerically is very strong here. And I'd say if you let him pick his draws, he wouldn't have picked them too different to what they are. And the ones that are going to go forward are drawn, you know, three, I'd say Adelaide River could be one. Covent, Covent Garden could be another one in six, and August Rodin is one. So while August Rodin was, was relatively far back in the field in, in the derby when his stamina was, you know, unproven, I suspect they'll be happy to have him a little bit more forward. I don't. Ex sometimes in the Irish Derby, the Bally Doyle team will set a, a, like a really strong pace. Uh, I, I'm not anticipating that. I think they'll be happy to go even or a bit better. Um, have a, August Rodin, you know, a little bit closer to the pace. And look, his main rivals are likely to be coming from behind him, and they're more than likely going to have to go around the opposition to, to make their challenge. So, look, how White Birch starts is going to be very interesting, but I suspect he'll be held up either way. So, I'm expecting Augusto Rodan to be a little bit handier, and he should go and win. Yeah, I'm curious, though. If that. Like you've highlighted, Jason, Aidan O'Brien's got five in the race. He's got the warm favourite, he's got four others in there. You said that. Often, well, not often, but it has been known in the past that the, the short prize favourite, often from that stable, does get beaten. If there is one in here, is it Proud and Regal, do you think? Well, yeah, look, Proud and Regal for, for Donica, I, look, I, I, it's a big question mark as to whether he's going to stay because there's uh, Speedy on the damn side as far as the pedigree. Um, but um, th th there's an opportunity. As a juvenile, he got a mile really well on bottomless ground. Any other dangers, Leanna, just quickly? I think the top end of the market's probably got it spot on. They've, they've beat each other before. Let's keep a close eye on White Birch there, who's just heading in. The Red Hood has come off. He's going to need to take his place nice and calmly. He's got the blanket on. That's just to stop him feeling the side of the stalls on his flanks. We want a nice clean break from him. And we want a great renewal of the 2023 Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby. The runners will be called home by Jerry Hannon. No. Let off in the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby with three of the first four home at Epsom clashing once again. A mile and a half to go, and it is Adelaide River who takes them along at the end of the first furlong from San Antonio in the blue cap. Handy in third is Augusta Rodan, who is followed by Proud and Regal. Covent Garden next, then Spreewell with a couple of lengths to Up and Under alongside the Great White Birch, and the back marker is Peking Opera. At the end of the first couple of furlongs, and the leader is Adelaide River, followed 
by stable companions, San Antonio and Augusta Rodin in fourth is Proud and Regal and fifth is Covent Garden with the final four Spreewell up and under White Birch and Peking Opera. Little has changed through these early stages. They've got just over a mile left to go and it's Adelaide River and Shamie Heffernan by two lengths to San Antonio and Wayne Lorden. In third place is Augusta Rodin and Ryan Moore attempting the Epsom Cutter double. In fourth is Proud and Regal and Gavin Ryan. Next, as they make the run towards the seven furlong point is Covent Garden, Declan McDonough on the inside of Spreewell and Shane Foley as they climb up towards the halfway stage. After Spreewell is up and under and Mikey Sheehy followed by White Birch and Dylan Brown, McMonigal, and lastly, Peking Opera and Tom Marcon. They've gone by halfway, and still little changes from first to last. It is Adelaide River by three parts of a length to San Antonio. In third, a length and a half back is Augusta Rodin, followed by Proud and Regal, two lengths to Covent Garden, a place in front of Spreewell, followed at the top of the track by Up and Under, and then White Birch and Peking Opera has been last from the word go with half a mile to run. Losing on the turn, San Antonio's injured. It's Adelaide River, but now looming on the outside, poised is Augusta Rodin. In third is Covent Garden, who's picked up a bit of ground. Spreewell has come under pressure, and then Proud and Regal, they're in the straight. Less than three furlongs to go in the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby. And Augusta Rodin joins stable companion Adelaide River. These kick clear of Covent Garden. Spreewell up and under. Proud and Regal picking up for White Birch's last. It's a Augusta Rodin who's having to battle here from Adelaide River. Four lengths to in third place, Covent Garden. It's Augusta Rodin in front as they run up to the finish. It's an Irish derby of fast and landmarks for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien. Augusta Rodin completes the double from Adelaide River and Covent Garden. A clean sweep for Mally Doyle and then Peking Opera and up and under spray well proud and regal and a long way off them was White Birch. A clean sweep indeed for Bally Doyle with the first, second and the third. August Rodin salutes as the favourite and completes the historic Epsom Curra Derby double, the first horse to do it since Harzan in 2016. But I have to think mixed emotions for the team there because San Antonio going wrong on the bend. Wayne Lorden hopped off when he must have stumbled, but it didn't, it didn't look good for him. We'll update you on San Antonio. But it was a win for the warm favourite, for the very smart August Rodin. Yeah, a bit of um, uh, it's sad, obviously, with, with um, San Antonio, and uh, I hope the jockey's all right. Um, sadly, that's not, not going to be a good end for, for San Antonio. But the eventual winner, he had to dig in, didn't he? I have to say, Adelaide River gave him a bit of a scare on. He rated 106 momentarily, had that sort of eyeball with him. But you, you never know. Something like that, that what happened just in front of Ryan Moore and the eventual winner could easily have thrown him off. He may well have got a knock. He may well have got a, a little bit of uh, hindrance as well as, as the horse was going back through the field. So um, maybe not just not as impressive as we thought he was going to be. The field strung out ultimately and a few disappointments. White Birch never got into it. Spreewell likewise. Aiden, in fact, had the first four home with Peking Opera running on from behind in fourth. What did you think, Anna? A, a bit laboured? Should he have pulled further clear of the stable mate? Yeah, possibly. I mean, look, at, with that incident happening, that's obviously perhaps affected a couple as well in behind. So whether that's kind of put a, a few off with, without making excuses for them. I mean, we both like White Birch last time around, obviously, at Epsom. He didn't really have any excuses today, did he? He jumped on terms. He, you know, he obviously just wasn't good enough. And look, I mean, Adelaide River... <laughs> nowhere near as good as August Rodin, so no, he shouldn't have got anywhere near as close to him. He shouldn't have been able to give him a scare, but ultimately he has dug deep and it doesn't help an incident like that happen in any way for a horse or a rider. And we, we, we don't really know what the sectionals were like, and Kevin did mention beforehand, didn't he, you know, has Adelaide River just gone a, a, a real canter on the way round, very, very smooth, and possibility, Kev, that um, they didn't go that quick and maybe that hasn't seen the stamina that August Rodan has got really come into play. Oh, I'd say there's no doubt they went steady, Jace. Um, I, I thought they might try to control it a little bit like that beforehand. Um, with the wind situation here as well, like with a tailwind and a straight... Like a